I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, lots of great things we're dealing with, lots of, lots of wonderful things. It's God. We are still talking about believing in Jesus. And what did he say concerning those who believe in him? Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god now how else would you know that god loves you if you don't receive from him you see we are not here by ourselves the earlier you settle this in your heart God is your father. And, and the Bible says because we are sons, he's giving the spirit of sonship into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He's your father. He's your father. If you have God as your father, why are you struggling? No, let's, let's, let's reason this. If the president of your country was your father and you are not an outcast son you know what i mean by that you are not an illegitimate son that they were hiding even the ones that have been that are hiding for so that they are not um, scandalized they will take good care of them and now i'm saying if he's a broke man, uh -huh, he, he has no money. That's why he's hiding. But when your father is the president of your country, think about it. Do you think you will lack any good thing that you need? I said, even if you're an illegitimate child, the moment he gets into that position, he will treat you well, even from a distance. He may not bring you close, but he will treat you well for fear of being blackmailed or for fear of being exposed. He will treat you well. And that's how, because of the office he carries, he is conscious about his integrity. He wants to protect what looks like integrity, whether he has it or not. That's for a man. But then if your father is God. Now you see, you know how people will think and say, yeah, but God is, all, God is our father. Everybody, you know, God is everybody's father. No. No. Don't believe that. I mean, in scriptures, Jesus looked at some people and said, you are of your father, the devil. Now, how could Jesus call the children of God the devil's children? I mean, Jesus, uh, that's blasphemy from <laughs> the mouth of Jesus. But we know that Jesus never told a lie. James tells us that every man sins. James said it. James said it. Every man sins. Now, look, no matter how perfect a man is, his tongue his tongue. If you've been able to keep your tongue from sinning, then you're a perfect man. That's what John, James said. So Jesus would not sin with his tongue. Because the Bible says he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. The Bible says he knew no sin. There was no sin in him. So if God was everybody's father, Jesus could have sinned when he called people on earth, human beings, the children of the devil, say, you are of your father, the devil, and his works you would do. You see that now? And Jesus was careful with his words. Actually, Jesus actually said, look, I don't say anything except that which the father has commanded me to say. So even when he said, you are of your father, the devil, he is saying what his father commanded him to say. That's to tell you that that was the truth. And this gets you to know that not every human being on the face of the earth is a child of God. 
And in John chapter 8, when Jesus made that statement, he was referring to the Jews that believed in him. Now, he had preached, and the Bible said many Jews believed in him. But then, this quarrel, this statement, this, this, this conversation ensued, and then Jesus eventually told them, you are of your father, the devil. That's why you don't understand what I'm saying. But now, you, you, if God is your father, sometimes, not just, I believe God is my father. No, have a mental exercise about this. Think, that's meditation. Think, think deeply. And the end of every meditation is a decision. If you meditate and you don't take a decision, you just wasted your time. When God says you shall meditate on it day and night, what does he say? It will aid your decision making. So if God is my father, hold on, how do I believe God? This is how you meditate. How do I believe God is my father? Listen. When I asked Jesus to come into my life, something happened to me. I knew. Because to be born again is an experience. It's not something that is out of your reach. It's an experience. If someone pours you cold water, you will feel it. You will know. You will know. When you are sick in your body, nobody sees the sickness entering your body. Only you wake up with pains. And once there is pain in your body, you know something is wrong. Okay? And if someone, maybe someone prays for you by laying hands on you, on you, or you go to the doctor and you are given drugs, now if that drug is what, now you only swallow the drug or it was given to you intravenously. Now, whatever means that drug was given to you, if it's a good drug, you will know that something has happened. You will know that something is happening to you. You will know you're feeling better. Nobody sees it, sees the working of these things outside. But you, you will know. Oh, I think I'm getting better. That drug is working. You know. So how much more the Holy Ghost coming into your body? You tell me you don't have to feel anything. Just believe I'm just, just believe, just take it as easy. They are deceiving you. Something happens when the Holy Ghost comes. You will know there's something different about me. You will know. Your appetite will change. You will know. Hey, about me, I did not feel anything. I, I, I doubt your salvation. I'm sorry to tell you this. I never felt anything. No. I'm just, I just feel normal. I'm just I'm just that I started going to church, started serving God. Uh-uh. It's by your strength. When the Holy Ghost comes, you will know. You cannot remain the same. You can't. And that's what Jesus was talking about. The signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out devils. Now, you, you see, you, know, you don't need to be trained in casting out devils. Now, I know some people... Um, do these things, you know, pastors organize school of uh, ministry and then they begin to teach people how to cast out devils. Brothers and sisters, there is no teaching to cast out devils but to command the devil to come out by the authority we have received from the Lord. You find the devil, tell him, come out. What if you don't believe that those things which you say will come to pass? Believe in your words. Because you're casting out that devil by the authority of Jesus. You're not casting out that devil by your own holiness. Believe me, you're not casting out that devil by your own maturity. You are functioning. See, a policeman that was, um, uh, whatever, um, employed or commissioned this morning, and he was told to go stand at the junction to control the traffic. See, he has as much authority as the one 
who is the IG, IGP. Are you getting what I'm saying? He has that much authority. He may not have that much influence, but he has that much authority. You see? So, you were just employed this morning and you're released. Go take charge of this junction. Okay, sir. You put on that uniform and then you go to that junction. You say, stop. You see, the same thing you will do is the same thing the IG will do. The IG is not going to come to the road and stand at that junction and say, I am the IG. And then when cars are passing, he will just turn to this place and, oh, this is IG, this is IG, let's stop. Hey, stop. And he, and I'll smile. Say, oh, let's move. IG smile and let's move. No, sir. Even if the IG goes to that junction, it's the same thing. He will still raise one hand telling stop. Why? It's not by his strength. It is the authority that have been given to that uniform. Anyone who puts on that uniform carries that authority. And it's so bad that if a fake person that did not go through the training wears that uniform also, he will be accorded the same respect until they find out that he's fake. Praise God. You remember the seven sons of Sceva. That's exactly what happened to them. Now, demons were being cast out Light, right, left, center. So everywhere you go, you know, out, come out. That, that's what was raining in their season, in their time. And then these fellows just felt, wow, this thing is sweet. Let's get into it. So, okay, let's go. They didn't know what to say. They didn't experience salvation. They, they, they didn't even, they just saw the apostles say, out, come out. And then people have been saved. And then they say, let's go, let's do the same thing. Say, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, come out. And then the devil, I'm sure even the devils began to like, come, this thing is getting too much. Can we, can we retreat? Let's hold a meeting. Come. Is it everybody that is casting out? Have Christians become so much? No. Let's, let's look at them very well. <laughs> so this guy said, in the name of Jehovah Paul preaches. Okay. Let's find out first. Now, not because the demons saw that they were not saved. No, the devil cannot tell who's saved or who's not saved. They cannot tell. It's in your consistency that they begin to recognize you as a person. See that now? In the consistency of things you do and how you live your life, demons begin to recognize that you are this person. See? Now, but they cannot tell this man is saved, this man is not saved. They can't tell. They don't know. So anybody can show up with open eye and say, get out, devil, and the devil answer. And maybe look at him later and say, come. And that's what happened to this guy. So Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? Um, um, ah, this was the, our fellows. The Bible said they pounced on them, tore their clothes, and those guys ran out naked from that place. You see, not because... The devil knew who they were, but because they were not functioning by the authority of Jesus and they didn't know what they were doing. So get it. We cast out devil by the authority we have received from the Lord. We cast out devils by the authority we have received from the Lord, not by how much influence we carry. Not by now, now of course, the more you grow in influence, for example. You, you, we've read about, you know, people like A.A. Allen who would be bold enough. And, and that's not just for A.A. Allen. We, we can do that also. You know, who would be bold enough and say, hey, 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 look at me. I am A.A. Allen. Now get out. Ah, sorry, sir. And they'll leave. Why? Because now they, they have recognized the authority and influence that this person carries by his consistent use. See, that's how the devil becomes scared of you. But let me tell you this truth also. The devil will not be scared of you enough to run away from you. The more you think the devil is scared of you, the more he wants to come close to you. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. So don't think, man, no, you know, sometimes people say those things and then you just like, <laughs> okay, I hope you don't really believe that. 
I'm always charged. No devil can stay around me. Uh uh, it's a lie. The devil is not afraid of your charge. He is not afraid. Do you know where this guy has dwelt? <laughs> this guy have dwelt right in the presence of God. So which anointing are you going to carry that is more than that? Now, when I mean dwell in the presence of God, not even this one you expect. The heat of the presence of God, this guy has survived it. My God, but now he can be He said, when I pray for five hours, no devil can come near my vicinity. One kilometer near me, no devil. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> I'm not saying that to deflate or your, your prayer life or no, but tell yourself the truth because if you truly believe that, then it means the devil has trapped your mind because he will operate there and convince you that he is not the one, that he is the Holy Spirit and you will accept it. So you will go into error because in your mind, you believe the devil is not near me. Hey. That's a deception. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the only experience that was recorded, the conversation that was recorded in that fast was the one he had with the devil. The encounter that was recorded in Jesus. This is Jesus. 40 days, 40 days, night and day fast. The recorded encounter was the one he had with the devil. So who, who else could the devil have run away from so far? Other than Jesus, this is the word of God made flesh. But Satan, he was fasting for 40 days and so The guy was just watching him. And watching him. Said, by now this guy should be very hungry. He, he, in coma, he wasn't concerned about all the spiritual things Jesus was receiving. All the resolves he was making in his heart. He wasn't concerned about that. Now, that's how the devil is. Say, mm, hold on, no, no. Let's wait. This is day 15. He's not hungry now. Wait, this is day 30. Mm. Wait, wait, day 39. Wow, this guy is very hungry now. Very hungry now, right? Ah, no man will survive this. Ah, okay. Um, Hayes, Hayes, excuse me, excuse me. If you are truly the son of God, you're hungry. You are hungry. Command these stones to be made. And he said, when he comes like that, you would not know this is the devil. He doesn't come. I'm the devil. I've come to tempt you. Shall you say you are spiritual now? Let me test you. No! I'm sure he came as one who's showing genuine concern. Hey, you're hungry. Do you have to wait to walk all the way home before you eat? Why don't you command these stones to be made bread and eat something? Hey, you are the son of God. Mm. Mm -mm. Man shall not live by bread alone. Why? You see, those three temptations that the devil tempted Jesus with were three main things that the Holy Spirit dealt with him during that fasting and prayer. While Jesus was fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit began to deal with him about man not living by bread alone. So that's where he was preparing for ministry, remember? And then the Lord began to teach him, look, you will say only what I tell you to say. Because, and you will live by what I tell you. Because man shall not live by bread. Moses quoted it. Shall by bread alone. Or by every word that proceeds from my mouth. Wow. So Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus functioned like a man. He grew into these things. Wow. I will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes. I will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now he's hungry. He's hungry. He's hungry. If you are the son of God, why don't you command these stones to be made bread? Mm. Oh, that's true, man. I fasted ah, 40 days, man. That's true. What am I even waiting for? What am I even doing? Ah, let me gather this. How many loaves of bread do I want to eat? Let me gather this stone. Ah! What you were just taught, you've thrown it away. 
But Jesus, mm -mm, mm -mm. man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. He told the, let me tell you the truth, it's the same thing that happens to you. The things that when you go on a fast, the things that the Lord deals with you on, trust me, is the same thing Satan will come and tempt you with. Oh, I don't know. The spirit of fornication is just disturbing me. And then you go before the Lord. And the Lord begins to open your understanding. And he will teach you the ways of women. He will teach you. He will teach you. And you come out of that fast. And say, hey, hey, see that girl over there? Can't you see that she likes you? Like, ah, it's true. She's really liking you. Ah, the way she's looking at me. Ah, she has walked past me like three times now. Hey, hey, ah, you have failed. And that's real failure. Because you're telling God, I don't qualify. My time is up. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Kanento Bradela Zuku Yementila Gidabas. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will not fall prey to the deception of Satan. You will not fall prey to the deception of evil spirits. But you will rise with boldness and deal with them as Jesus has said. Cast them out. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.